Hello, I'm going to be annotating Exposure by Wilfred Owen, who lived from 1893 to 1918. So the word exposure is related to the weather and the conditions of being um, outside in the weather for a prolonged period of time. In the first line, our brains ache in the merciless iced east winds that knife us. You can see that the setting in time and place is in the First World War trenches. And the poet uses um, a metaphor to describe the merciless and um, attacking um, uh, knifing wind, which is an unexpected as we expect the fight to be between the soldiers. So here I'm going to put personification and also I'm going to put here in brackets unexpected so the first theme of man versus the weather is introduced um, then I want to draw your attention to the use of um, ellipsis Wearied we keep awake because the night is silent, low drooping flares confuse our memory of the salient. Um, and then these two words, silence and centuries, this is a hissing sound and that snaky sound is capturing the noise of the wind, but it's also evoking loneliness. Um, and here I'm going to put... Siblings, but obviously you'd need to explain the capturing of the noise of the wind and the loneliness. Okay, in stanza two, I want to look at this word um, among its brambles. And I want to point out how the poet generates a metaphor through natural things like a bush, um, a blackberry bush, um, showing that the um, man's war is a cheap imitation of nature. So here, I think, if I add imitation, of nature, you can explain the pain and the suffering. Okay, then I want to look at the use of this question here, which it is, Um, an example of bathos, the rhetorical question, what are we doing here, highlights the hopelessness. So you might also want to add in one of Owen's major themes of futility. Okay, then let's have a look at poignant misery of dawn. Poignant means moving and heartfelt. Misery means um, uh, completely destitute, lacking any positivity or hope. Um, and so this is um, a, sh a sharp contrast beginning in the third stanza, which is an example of oxymoron. And the contrast um, shows you that dawn is meant to be golden and ho ho hopeful but this explores the theme in more depth. Um, then let's look at this um, phrase, shivering ranks of grey. This time, um, Owen personifies the rain as shivering. And that colour adjective um, is emphasising the, hopeless, the helplessness of the soldiers who are beyond help. Then moving on to stanza four, if we have a look now at the bullets that streak the silence. We've got some very harsh assonance and consonants of the S and the T sounds linking the weather and the gunfire and therefore the conflict and pain. So I'm going to put here assonance, consonants, linking weather and gunfire. And just point out the S and the T. 
Okay, next I want to look at with sidelong flowing flakes that flock. Now the snow is described. And um, obviously in 1918 there was a truce at Christmas time, but that's not part of this poem. This is um, alliteration to emphasise the 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 F sounds of the cold weather and this kind of um, blanketing of the weather. Just highlight the F here. And um, obviously this is the main theme of the poem. And so I'll just write here, cold weather blanketing of the weather. And these are quite unique conditions of war. Um, and then I want to look at this idea of nonchalance, which is a lovely word, but implies that the weather sees the soldiers as beneath it and weak. So this personification is very powerful. Okay, now let's look at the fifth stanza. And then this idea of cringing in holes. Okay, so man is like an animal, it's likened to the scared animals, the rabbits in the holes, which shows that nature, that before nature, man is, is just an animal. So this is to do with hierarchy, nature, and power. And the holes are obviously the trenches. Um, then let's have a look at the, the rhetorical question used again, which is now the second time conveying a sense of boredom and frustration. This is showing the confusion now. The conditions are so bad they don't think that normal is normal anymore. Right, and then moving on to stanza six. Slightly different imagery, if we look at this adjective, this compound adjective, dark red and jewels, this is generating a meaning about blood, describing the blood as jewels. The poet sees men as valuable, but wasted. So um, I'm going to put here... sacrificed so that's a very very powerful metaphor okay and then if we look at this phrase here spring our love um this is almost an example of intertextuality certainly re religious illusion um from the phrase our love is made afraid so obviously the theme of fear here, but the men are so broken and hurt that they feel abandoned and they lose their faith in um, in God. And this obviously contrasts now to the Garden of Eden. When man fell for Eve and entered into sin. So these scattered punctuation marks now are slowing the pace and we can imagine the soldier finally succumbing to exposure and dying. Um, and then in the final stanza, if we look at the idea of the eyes being ice, this is obviously the metaphor generating that they're um, dead, empty, without a soul. So it's a very unchristian metaphor and then but nothing happens this is repetition final line emphasizing that the process doesn't end the soldiers are actually now frozen in hell um i'm just going to put repetition so academically now if we're going to write an essay about these stanzas and our understanding of exposure we might want to look at how effectively the poet Wilfred Owen uses repetition and a consistent structure to create a static 
tone, that means sort of nothing happening of the poem, to present the theme of man versus nature. And then if we want to go for the full essay, we could compare how Wilfred Owen defies the convention of the war and portrays the weather to present the horrors of war with one other poem in the anthology.